Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafont, your favorite radio host, your only radio host, and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know, I start my show off with gratitude or thankfulness. I am so grateful to be here. Yeah, so thankful. It's a beautiful day here in Trinidad and Tobago. I can see the clouds outside. It's absolutely gorgeous. It rained a little bit. You know, I don't know. I think it just wanted to say, hey, I'm still around. So it rained a little bit. Yeah. But it's generally a beautiful blue sky with a few little poofy clouds floating around. Yeah. So I am thankful to still be here and to be doing what I'm doing on my radio show Between the Lines. And I have with me a beautiful woman, Sylvia Hubbard. Yes, she's smiling. And we're going to be talking about her today. And, and, you know, her story, I'm sure, is going to be an inspiring one. One that I hope will touch somebody out there, even if it's one person. Yeah. She is going to be talking about like a boss. Yes, like a boss. Yeah. She's a single mom of three. She is the author of 45 novels. Well, I don't know if she's working on another one now. Hmm, at the rate she's going, 45. Some people just can't get one out. And she's a best-selling author, yeah? Let me tell you a bit about her quickly, and we go straight into it. So Detroit author and founder of Motown Writers, Sylvia Hubbard, has independently published over 45 novels. Oh, my God, I was I'm corrected here. As an avid blogger, Sylvia has received numerous awards and literary recognition for her work. Plus, she has had seven number one bestsellers. Whoa, she has, she's also a speaker, literary encourager, and busy mompreneur expert. Clearly, mompreneur. So welcome, Sylvia Hubbard, to Between the Lines. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's awesome, mompreneur. Now listen to me. The first thing I'm going to say is, where do you find the time, lady? Where do you find the time? <laughs> a lot of people do ask me that. And it's, it's all about just not seeing it as 24 hours anymore. Mm -hmm. You got to you gotta break it down to not even hours, but, but kind of like minutes. You mm -hmm. know, you have like a lot of minutes in a day to do a lot of stuff and sometimes things don't take anything more than 10 minutes mm -hmm. so that's kind of like the rule of my house um when the kids are growing up you know it's 10 minutes to clean the room it's 10 minutes to do this it's 10 minutes so mm -hmm. like you put it down so then you can get the responsibilities done you mm -hmm. know and you can get to the hard stuff quickly and then reward yourself by doing all the easy stuff later yeah. Um, so then you can sit down and do what you need to do in terms of what your passion is and, and what your, your work life is. What I'm hearing is that is make time for your passion. That's what I'm yeah. hearing. Make time for your, passion. for your passion. Yeah, make time for it. And, and it's, it's a part of you. It's a part of who you are, what you love doing. And why should mm -hmm. we put aside the things that we, we love to do because we have all the other excuses. Oh, I have to cook. Oh, I have to clean. Oh, I have to go to the meeting. And I have made time for you because it's it's a part of you. Yeah? Right. It is. It's, your passion should be just as important as your breathing. Yeah. So you you do this unconsciously. Yes. <laughs> you can find a way to, to work that passion into your life. And once you make room for what you were meant to be here on earth, you will receive the blessings you deserve. Yes, 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 you do your part. I, I was telling you before that before we came on live, I was on a conversation with, the, you know, with a friend of mine and I was saying that to oh, her, you know, you have to do your part. Spend time working on you and all the blessings is going to open up for you. You know, right. we, can't, we can't keep asking God, give me this, give me that, give me that. And he sees you're just not ready for it. You have to work on you. Yeah, I always say, I always tell people, God doesn't make room for, God doesn't give you what you pray for. God gives you what you work for. Yeah, yeah. And so what you're, you're ready not working, for. And what yeah, you're, you're ready not working for. on it, then you're not going to get what you deserve from it. <clears throat> if you're not, sorry, I didn't realize I muted myself. If you're not ready, 
for what it is that you're asking for, then how can you handle the things right. that people also send you? How, how can you? But people are not thinking that. They're just in the, yeah. I want more, I want. Give me, give me, give me. I want, want, want. But mm -hmm. are you ready to handle it? My goodness. <laughs> but you are a mom of three. How old yes. are your kids? What are their ages? So I, they're now um, almost, they're almost grown. <laughs> they're all fully grown, not fully grown. So the oldest one now is 20, what is she, 23? And she's actually gone into software development. Nice. And there's the 22 and he's a tow truck driver trying to be an entrepreneur at it. And yeah. then we just shipped the 17 year old off to Bowling Green on a full ride scholarship. Nice. So I've been a mom for over 20, a single mom for 20 years, and I, I've become an expert literally at it. <laughs> <laughs> I would think so. Are you still a single mom? Are you still a single mom? No, actually, I got married a year ago. Whoa. Happily married. So, yes. Yes. Yes, I finally made room for that too. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, let's talk about that. Let's go back a little bit. Because you had them, you you'd recently got married, congratulations, that's a year ago. But prior to that, you were dealing with it on your own. And of course, you couldn't have written, you you know, the 45 plus novels were done during the time that you yeah. had them and, and, and managing the house and three kids. So tell us no. as moms, yeah, tell us as, mo as moms listening to all of that, how did you manage no, I'm serious. What are, I always like to ask for three tips. Three tips so, that you can share. Yeah? Yeah, a lot of people do ask me that. So it really all started, uh, the seed was planted when I first had the, the first baby. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I, I could not, being a mom, especially a single mom, you know, you, I think all single moms have to have a backbone of titanium and yeah. a heart Jade. Girl, we, we are born with that. We are born with that. Because <laughs> you have to be stronger than anything around. Yeah. And then you have to be, uh, you have to have your heart so rare and precious, but even when it's scuffed, it still looks beautiful. Yeah. So when I decided to become a single mom, I knew that it was a, 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 a large and enormous endeavor, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be a writer too. Mm -hmm. So I needed to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I, but I didn't want to raise my children and say, follow your passion, follow your dream, follow your heart. And they didn't see me doing it because that would make me a hypocrite. Yeah. So I had to learn how to work my passion into my responsibility. And it's like, a, it's just a weaving. It's kind of like you're braiding your life together, just yeah. one, one strand over the other strand. And I incorporated, I raised my kids around me instead of me around my kids. So ah. they understood mom's working, mom's typing. When my eyes are down on the keyboard and my fingers are, are touching them, you know, unless you are dying, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that approach. It has to be a death experience. Are you are you going to die? <laughs> is it, is this if, a if you're death? dead, you can wait till I finish this chapter. <laughs> but you know, Sylvia, people do it the other way around. You said you make your kids, you raise your kids working around you, as opposed to right. you working around the kids. Which is what because your kids, know. your yes. kids are your kids. They need your strength. They need to learn from you. They need to be there. Um, and be present in their lives, mm -hmm. but not in my life. I'm not your entertainer. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to make sure you are guided towards greatness. Mm -hmm. So being me hovering and being a helicopter parent and making sure things get done, why don't I just teach you the dangers, teach you how to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. and then teach you how to think for yourself. That's right. So then you're not bothering me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I say this to a lot of parents, they're so consumed with, with, with the, you know, they say things like, okay, and I used to say it too, but I've learned from it. You know, my kids are my life. My kids are my life. So it's like everything is surrounded around. And I'm like, hold up. 
But these kids, they grow, they move out. And then what? You start to feel an emptiness in, in, in your heart, in your soul, in your space, in the house. And it's like, now you start pushing them to start making grandbabies to replace the kids so that you can have somebody to, to run after. Hell no. And the one no. thing they, they didn't teach them through that whole thing is how to live life. Exactly. So they've been going and saying, okay, the kids are my life. But then when the kids get out to life, they didn't have an example of how to experience totally. life, mm -hmm. how to do your own life, how to take control of your life. Mm -hmm. So, because that's all they knew was that their mother took care of everything. That's they don't right. need that. That did not help them at all. You, no. you teach your kids to live without you, not mm -hmm. with you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to say that again. I said, teach your kids to live without you. Right. Not, teach your kids no, to live without I think you. I need to rename this episode to that because I am so curious. <laughs> if, if we don't get to talk about your books, I think that is the biggest lesson that you could ever teach anyone. I am so serious. Thank because, you. Yeah, no, I am serious. Even if we don't get to the books, that is the biggest lesson of the millennium. Teach yes. your kids to live without you, but they are not doing that. I am mm -hmm. a proponent of that, Sylvia. I don't want my kids around me. I say hello. Oh, I, I love them. Yeah, I love my children, yeah. and then I love that they still like to come and see me, or they'll just call me and say, "Hey, ma, how are you doing?" You know, they're not asking for money or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. But it, the but the wonderful part is that they can go away and then come back, and mm -hmm. I get that time to to do my passion even more. Like. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah and you have them out of the house you're like right. don't you have somewhere to go yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah don't you have somewhere to and they'll be like are you trying to get rid of me no yes i'll help you out of the house <laughs> not at all <laughs> that's like push them out the door push them out the door and lock lock the door <laughs> No, but this is awesome. So you have done, okay, tell me exactly how many books you have done. So in all, it will be, by the end of the year, it will be 50. I'll be releasing two more books. My, so yeah, it will be 50. So my current book is called Daddy's Girl. And Whoa. that's the one that I've had fun pushing and yeah. it's an erotic thriller. And, I noticed, um, you know, I'm noticing you, I know, Sylvia, you're writing a lot of erotic books. That is another yeah, thing. I write romance. Well, my main category is romance suspense. Uh -huh. So I branch off from there. Uh -huh. um, and I always tell people I'm bad on paper so I can be good in life. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Try, try to convince people of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm more, I, you know, I just have like, you know, I want to do the experiences, but you know, you just hey, it's good on paper, so let me keep going. <laughs> well, hello. Let now that you have, now that you have a husband, you're supposed to be practicing so that you know <laughs> what to do, what to do in the book. You're supposed to use him as a guinea pig and say, "Honey, this is for right. research. Honey, this is for research." <laughs> that is what. That I mean, is what yeah, I, that's fine. This is this will keep me married for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this book tonight. <laughs> Let's try this out. Yeah, but I, I've spoken to a lot of erotic authors, people who have become, you know, national bestsellers, New York Times bestsellers, and that's what they do. They practice things with their spouse or their, their significant other or whatever, and they're like, this is for research, and, and they go to the, to the strip, whatever. It's all part really? of... Yes, they do. It's all part of research in order to find out what is sexy, what's appealing. They go out there. So I'm saying to you, practice with your husband. Say, honey, let's try it. <laughs> let's try it. This is for my next book. And he'd be like, really? No, really? And say, yes, yes. It's, it's yes. I didn't think about that. I think, yeah. But don't, don't, I, make I guess him, don't, make him listen, a... don't make him listen to this episode before you tell him that. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will do that. <laughs> I guess I've always had a very good imagination, you know, and I, and I, you know, when it was actually my mom who encouraged me to really find my voice as a writer because mm -hmm. I actually needed money to pay bills. I needed that wow. extra income. I wasn't getting child support. I was mm -hmm. working full time, so I couldn't get money from the state. Yes. So I needed like 
just the extra a hundred or two hundred bucks yeah. at the end of the month just to get me over. Get you. Yeah. So my mom was like, Well, Sylvia, you can write. You mm -hmm. know you can write. So even if you sell just a hundred dollars a month, you know, that'll help. And I, yeah. you know, I was like, Yeah, I might as well. You know, I saw everybody else just pumping books out and pumping them right. like, you know, I I could do that. That's not a problem. So that hundred dollars turned into a thousand dollars and then it just kept growing and i just the kids really saw or i really and i really involved them in the business so like when we were out at bending tables you know they'll help me out set the table up help nice. me collect the money go yeah. out and pass out cards yeah. even on on days when i knew like i didn't have enough gas money to get to the next week by paycheck wow. you know they knew when i was packing the boxes by the door we're going to be going up and down seven and eight mile in detroit Mm -hmm. selling the books at hair shops they knew that they knew automatically hey let's mm -hmm. get our stuff together and get ready to sit in the car you know because they understood that this was our extra business and we needed to work this business in order to get what we needed wow. so they so involving your children in your business and that's just like for any mompreneur yeah. involve them in there have them understand what it takes to make money what it takes to build a business, what it takes to, to network. Yeah. Because when they get out there, even in, in trying to get college interviews and job interviews, mm -hmm. seeing you network, seeing you how you talk to people and get them to talk back and getting what you want out of them, they learn from all of that. Wow. You are really a living example, I'm telling you. And a fabulous parent. I am so proud of you. I Thank am so you. proud of you. I'm listening to you and I'm saying, wow. And, and it's, it's, it's boys and girls you have or it's just girls? It's two girls. Um, one, uh, I have a girl, boy, girl. Okay, girl, boy, girl. Nice. Right. So you, you have a nice little balance there. I mean, this is, this is amazing. And, you know, I want a lot of moms, women, black, or it doesn't matter what nationality race you are. It can happen for you because, you know, people listening to these episodes, Sylvia, feel, oh, yeah, she had everything going for her. She had a full-time job. She just needed extra money, but I don't have a job. I don't have this. I don't have that. How can I do it? I, you know, I don't have the kind of support. She still had her kids to go hand out flies. I don't have anybody. Nobody. But actually, that, that is wrong because um, the kids were, I'd say the oldest, she was about 15, 16 years old. Um, that I had, she was 15 and then the baby, mm -hmm. well, I always call her the baby, but mm -hmm. you know, and then at that point in our lives, we were pretty comfortable. You mm -hmm. know, I was, I was renting a house. I always wanted to own, but I had gotten comfortable, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm working, being a mom and blah, blah, blah. I got laid off. Mm -hmm. I got laid off for about a year and a mm -hmm. half at that point and then the government shut down and if you don't know the united states when the government shuts down you don't get your unemployment and there's no retro you just have to wait for the government to open so at that point the government had shut down for three months and i was three months behind on everything literally everything and then we had a fire and in eight minutes everything got burned to the ground like when i say to the ground you couldn't even see like there was nothing left of the house anymore oh in eight god. minutes that's in how fast minutes. the fire burned <laughs> oh my god how, how so you, when people how say you, how you, you know hey this? she had this she had this at that point that night of the fire i had 68 cents in my bank account you were rich Sixty-eight. <laughs> right. In, right. In Thailand, I would be rich. <laughs> In the United States, that is past broke. Like that barely. That was That's barely anything. Yeah. And it it didn't hit me that things were really bad because I was still like, okay, I was still hopeful. We can do this. You know, I'm still encouraging the kids, My you know, God. we're going to get through this and blah, blah, blah. So we got up the next morning and I'm like, okay, we got to get to the Red Cross. We got to do this. We got to find some money. We got to find shelter. We, you know, we're still wearing the same clothes we had that night wow. that we had got out the house with. And my son kept saying, ma, ma, 
ma, ma. And I, you know, I'm, I'm ignoring him, like, get your clothes on, let's go. <laughs> and then he, and I'm walking out the door and it was in the middle of winter. So I'm walking out the door and I step out on the porch and he, he says, Sylvia. And you know, I did that little, you know my title? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you call me by my first name, <laughs> my government <laughs> name. <you. laughs> So I looked at him and he said, Ma, I don't have any shoes. And like, it hit me. It wow. hit me that I have failed this boy. You know, mm -hmm. all, all our lives where as a single mom, I'm, I was always told you're going to be a failure. Your kids will grow yeah. up and be yeah. drug addicts. Oh. They'll drop out of school. They'll become pregnant. I mean, there's so many, they'll become, they even say, you know, they become serial killers. They even yeah, go that far. And, <laughs> yeah. and then on top of that, we were living in Detroit. He was a black male. We yeah. were destined to fail. They don't even give us the title of family. They give a single parent household. Wow. They, they give the mafia family. That's how much that word is so valuable. The yeah. head is respected. The yeah. house is respected. Okay. They don't even give me that title. So I I was set up to fail. To fail. And yeah. Wow, Sylvia. Oh my, how did you come back from that? Why are you on this show, Sylvia? Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And it was all about planning praying and and parenting it, yeah. it's about you know plan for the worst to always happen but mm -hmm. the house always wins and then if you don't know what to plan for go find somebody else and then help them out learn how they made that mistake and try mm -hmm. not to get yourself into that and then the next mm -hmm. thing was praying Mm -hmm. We we pray in advance. You pray for expectancy. Of course. But you you don't ask the king of the world for five dollars. You you ask him to give you the knowledge for the wealth that you need to That's make right. more. That's right. That's and right. And then the last thing is it's parenting. Like I said, raise your kids around you, not you around your kids. Yeah. Um, run your house like a business and yeah. keep your business to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Keep your and the last thing and most important is parent yourself mm -hmm. because when your kids see that you practice what you preach but also what you teach mm -hmm. then they're gonna come up even stronger mm -hmm. knowing that this is what they need to do mm -hmm. so standing there staring at him him staring at me but my soul was on the ground yeah I knew I had to get back up and if I had not plan prayed and parent because overnight when somebody found out about the fire um they said if sylvia has done anything nice for you can you give her a couple of dollars wow and then i i was about to have a pain i was i was actually having a nervous breakdown in front of my son but i knew i couldn't show him that yeah. but i was dying there because i needed to give him that one thing i i was not going to fail him because mm. failure was not an option, okay. but I had failed. Yeah. So I did what any normal person did, and I looked at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and then I opened up my bank app, which is what I had been looking at prior to the fire. That's how I knew I had 68 cents <laughs> before the fire. Yeah, yeah. And I opened it up, and overnight, people had given me a couple of thousand dollars. Wow. And I was able to move on because if I, I had not planned and helped other people yeah. by seeing how they messed up and yeah. they were like oh my gosh sylvia has always helped me sylvia has helped me here yeah. sylvia has helped yeah. me there yeah. the and good things the good things you did paid back yes. when you needed it Do and it was good. wonderful because then i could show my kids grace yeah. and mercy yeah. and and how humility. to be humility favor. humility humility sylvia humility be humble because when you did it, you didn't do it. You didn't have those people with the thought that, oh, my house is going to burn down. So let me help them now so that when the house burns down, right. they can help me. I did, no, I no, I no. did it out of just, I needed to learn, and but I needed to be helpful to others okay. because you just should. You yes. just should. Yes, and and I showed my kids that. Awesome. So you call, you say, you plan, you prayed, and? Karen. Karen. Triple P's. Yes. Planned, pray, and parent. I love that. Three wonderful tips. Oh my God. I want to.
pop across to your website. I mean, we, we really have to talk again, Sylvia. I, know, I am so serious. This this is awesome. Let me get it. It's Sylvia Hubbard, is it? Yes. Yeah. Let me see here now. <laughs> this is such an awesome. You are so encouraging. You see this Thank interview? You. I am personally sending it to my friend who I was talking to this morning. She's gonna hear, yes, she's gonna hear me saying that, of course, because it's being recorded. So I am personally going to share it with her. I think she really needs to hear it. Right. Because we have to go through our storms in order to get to our rainbows. Oh, yeah. But you can't hold your children's umbrellas for them. I love that. You can only teach them how to hold the umbrella. Yeah. 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 I love that. Here we are. Are you seeing that? Yes. Yes. They can always go there. Yeah. And that's where my books are. Mm -hmm. And find out more about me. Make sure you subscribe so then you can find out even more of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'll actually, October 8th here in Metro Detroit, mm -hmm. we'll be talking about my plan, pray, parent method at the Novi uh, in Imagine Theater. So nice. I'm really excited about that. We have like less than 20 tickets left right now, but they can always go to my website at sylviahubbard.com mm -hmm. slash leadership tour mm -hmm. and um, get their tickets if they're in the area. Come on up no matter where you are and hear me speak. Let me see that. sylviahubbard.com slash leadership tour. Yep, all one word. Leadership wrong. <laughs> That's all right. We won't get on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna work it out. I mean, hey, you had sixty-eight cents. I could, I could get the spelling. <laughs> so scroll down. You should be able to scroll yeah. down once the page loads. Yeah. So this is it. Yep, this is it. Keep scrolling and I have like some pictures for you. Nice. So it's going to be 12 inspiring speakers and I'm one of the chosen 12 nice. to That's just nice. inspire. And I just want to, I do want to inspire moms, single moms, just parents to show that you can weave your, your passion into your parenting. Yeah, I love that. Weave your passion into your parent. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to have that as a tag weave your passion into your parenting it, and it's vital it's vital for you it's vital for the children mm -hmm. it's just vital for your home yeah because yeah. once they leave you don't want to just say oh no now i gotta start building a business no you should have started building that business like 20 years ago mm -hmm. now that they're walking out the door <laughs> the, do you think it's been 20 more years yeah 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 not when they're walking out the door or, or when you retire, <laughs> or when you retire at sixty-five or sixty, right? Right? You're supposed to yeah. for a long time. Even when you're young, you start it. Even before the kids come, you start. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I see you have all these little erotic books, Miss Hubbard, uh, <laughs> Miss Hubbard. Wait, hmm. I'm watch, 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 watch this one. Teach me to love. What is going on here, Miss Hubbard? Look at that. Look at that. I, I. I'm going to speak to your husband. You hold on. I'm going to have a word. Just one word. You say thank you. I you don't know. <laughs> I told you what to do. Look, look at this. What is, what, what is this about? I, 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 these kind of whips and chains. Huh? What is going on? <laughs> I told you to practice. Don't tell him I say that. And say, honey, honey this is for research. And say it with a straight face now, Sylvia. Um, you know, right. I've, I've been advised. <laughs> I've been advised that we need to do research. She'll be like, "What? What kind of research?" So the first thing you need to do is take off all your clothes. <laughs> all right. Let's just go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I gotta put this on paper. <laughs> You'll be like, "You're using me. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of." Like, I don't think right. he would mind. I don't. <laughs> But you know, he had to put up a front, you know, he had to put up a front. So he'll right. say that and say, really now, yeah, you just, you just get to go in, snap those fingers now and tell him, hey, hey, this is for research. Get to it. Get to it. <laughs> oh my, I love the book covers. It's quite appealing. Thank you. Yes, I love it. I don't know what, what are you eating and drinking in Detroit? Because to, to push out 50 books, what is going on with you? Push out three children, push out it's 50 books. 
because pu- <laughs> because pushing out a book is like pushing out a child you know i'm telling you it is it, it is, is. <laughs> And I, you know, I do have to thank the kid. I do thank being a mom. I never, when someone, I think someone asked me this the other day and they were like, well, would you go back and, and change, you know, cause you could have written even more books without the kids and, no. like, go back no. and, and change what, what happened to you, what you experienced. And I said, it was the children that gave me the power to become yeah. who I am today. Yeah. It was yeah. the strength of being a mommy yeah. that yeah. pushed yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. To do because, this. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's no way. Everything happens for a reason, Sylvia. Everything happens right. for a reason. And that was your motivation. That was and, your motivation. And I never believe I made a mistake. I made a yeah. choice. That's and then right. When you That's make a right. choice, mm-hmm. like my daddy said, you all you either earning or learning. Yeah. And you yeah. take that experience and either earn from it or learn from it. Yeah. But you have to keep going. You can't just yeah. stand there and wait for another choice to come. <laughs> no, no. You already made a choice. Keep going. Right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh my goodness. Sylvia, this is awesome. I 50, 50 books and still going. We wouldn't have the time to click on each and go through each, but I'm just featuring them here because I know people will Thank go you. to them. Yeah, go to them. What is this, Sylvia? Sex weed? No, we have to come back on on the show. I'm watching you, you know. I'm watching you. Sex weed? <laughs> I am watching. He touched me. Touched you where? Touched you where? No, I need, I need to check that out. No, I'm, you are I'm, so funny. <laughs> I am watching you. What is go- because let me tell you what happens with when people um, meet up an erotic author. They're like, oh, she's like that. Mm. <laughs> That's what she's doing, huh? That's what she's doing. <laughs> like, like I said, I just I'm bad on paper, so You're I can bad be on paper. <laughs> I stick to that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You stick with that story. You stick with that story, Sylvia. Uh-huh. <laughs> Fix the halo on your head. Fix the halo. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's, it's kind of crooked. Push it from the yeah. side. Yeah, it's kind of crooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crooked. <laughs> but Sylvia, this has been a wonderful discussion. I, you know, Thank you. I learned so much from you. You inspire me even more even more you have said things that move me that resonate with me and you know this is why i do my show it's for me you know i'm kind of selfish it's for me but it's also for other people out there Definitely. yeah it's also for other people out there. and i tell you as soon as i'm finished doing this year with you i am certainly sending it over to my friend personally sending it to her you know it's yes. it's, it's a must it's a must this this message has to get out there are many women who are, and men, who are holding back themselves. But I, I stress on the women because of this, the programming and socialization we have had to, to give up on who we are when we become a parent, especially. When we are married, especially. To give up the passion. Our life is all about the kids and that's what you're supposed to do. Hell no. Hell no. I want people to... To listen to Sylvia and understand is not a matter of living around your kids. It's the other way around. Right. It's Definitely. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Sylvia, for being on between the lines. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah. Ah, mwah, right back to you. And don't forget, <laughs> don't forget, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> we keep that, <laughs> keep that between us. You be good, my <laughs> darling, and all the best to you. Let me know when the other books are coming out. I will try my best to support you. Thank you. Yeah, and help promote, do what I can. I really love to see my guests pushing out more books, doing more stuff, expanding. It's going to be 2020, Sylvia. We have yeah. three more months to go, girl. Three more months to go. I know. I know. Come on, you have work to do. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot. I have, have a, a lot, lot to come. That's right. You have a lot to do. And, and you still have 68 cents in your account? Wait, say that again. Do you still have 68 cents in your account? No, not 68 cents. <laughs> I was able, actually from my book royalty since then, like a year later, um, I was able to buy a house from Habitat for Humanity. Oh, my, no. 
you gotta come back on the show. No, no. <laughs> you, you, gotta come back. You, you gotta you gotta come back. I that is amazing. What do you mean you buy a house some habit habitat for for humanity? Tell us a bit so, about um like I said, like even before the fire, you mm-hmm. know, as a single mom, I did wanna have a house for yeah. the kids and stuff. So but I had gotten comfortable. So the fire kind of pushed me to be in yes. an uncomfortable space. And since yes. we didn't have a lot of money, um, I was working at, I was still unemployed, but I was like hustling books. I was just, mm-hmm. hey, we mm-hmm. got to get these books going because mm-hmm. I need money. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, I had entered the Habitat for Humanity program, mm-hmm. which helps uh, people uh, get houses so you help build your house yeah. then you put the down payment on there and then you start working to own a house nice. so I got into that program and me and my children volunteered you know to build nice. our house and build other houses nice. and then I saved up the money for the closing cost I saved up money for you know the the down payments on it I saved money nice. up for it to put the mortgage, start the mortgage and everything. Nice. And so then I just eventually just started buying my house with my books. Oh, Sylvia. Hmm. May God continue to bless you. Thank you. I take that blessing. Take yes, that. yes. And your children, may they walk in the same path and an even greater path. More is in store for them oh, and more is in store for That's nice. Yes. Thank you so much for inspiring me today sunday yes we're beginning another month in the year and i yes thank you. yes i thank you blessings thank you